Explore Traveler presents, welcome to Bandelier National Monument. So I'm here uh, in just north of Santa Fe now at Bandelier National Monument and Park. And basically the smell of juniper is in the air. I can hear kids playing out in some of the far off campgrounds and animals and squirrels and deer and the bears are all walking around. So this is a great time to get outdoors and we're going to be here. We're going to show you the tips and tricks of hiking, backpacking, and I'm doing some separate videos here. How to's for people on uh, different backpacking equipment, tents and cooking water and little backpacking stoves and I will uh, tell you about the different food I eat and and maybe you'll be interested in getting some of the stuff yourself. But uh, welcome to the National Forest. All right, so I am at the beginning of the Pueblo Loop main trail just over by the visitor center here in Bandelier National Park. So the infrastructure here is actually it's just downright amazing they have been putting stuff in here since the early 1900s so they've had lots of time to get things situated I mean who starts a trail off on sidewalks I mean I don't even know maybe it goes the whole way the trail's up by the Juniper campground were pretty good as well. A lot of them were paved, so it's possible. A lot of the archaeological slash anthropology type sites that have been excavated from our ancient past are closed at this time. So I'm coming here to get the same similar information. Nothing is the same, but it is definitely similar in nature. Look at those cliffs. I can see why they use these cliff sides. So, here at the visitor center, you're just over 6,000 feet, which still is higher elevation. It's higher elevation than Albuquerque. I start breathing harder, I notice that. The campground is definitely higher than here. And I hiked from the campground to the top of some plateau. And there I was able to basically, I, I, don't, I had to have been pushing 7,000 feet at that point. So what's this? I don't know, some kind of fruit. Now there is black bears here, so keep that in mind. And if they want your backpack because you have beef jerky inside, I suggest you just give it to them. Now, these aren't bears like Alaska, but they're still bears. And bears can get a little bit aggressive when they want food. Lots of resting places. That's it. The main loop, long house, long house, and the cliff dwellings. That's where we want to go. Basically, there's a spot up here. 
where they carved into these cliffs. And they lived for hundreds of years until the environment changed and they left. This Pueblo culture was spread out. New Mexico, Colorado. Kind of a chiefdom of nature. This kind of looks like a cistern. I think it is. I don't think it's old, but it's older. And I know that some people watching these videos, they're no longer capable of going on these hikes. And I understand that. I myself, I am aging. So that's one of the reasons why I document all this stuff. I figure I can enjoy it in my elder years. So we are very early in the morning. That's why the sun isn't on these cliffs yet. It, I mean, I got up at 5 a.m., got to the visitor center around 5.45 from the campground. And of course, I stopped along the way. But you can see sun is creeping down. It's around 6 a.m. now. I wanted to get an early start. One, I wanted to beat a lot of the tourists, which are here. I think there's some hiking already. Make sure you bring lots of water, especially water. And probably something that munch on if you need calories like trail mix or something bag of nuts well this is definitely remnants of some sort of storage facility or gardening or something This is a pretty cool place. Can't believe how. I, mean, I know it goes up in elevation, but this beginning part is pretty easy. If you have a uh, medical condition, oh, uh, you know what? They got these cisterns in these areas here. It's got to be some sort of agricultural. Oh, let's see. That's where we're going. Into these cliff faces. Look at those rocks. You definitely want to take all that into consideration. And I think people with heart conditions do need to be careful due to the fact that being above 6,000 feet puts stress on your oxygen levels. Okay, so there we're gonna branch off here to the right and then we're gonna come back and look for the longhouse. My understanding is the reason why this is easy to use is housing control is hey the holes were already there when the people got here 
so they didn't need as much modification. And B, this is a lot of very old compressed aged ash that has turned into rock faces, so it's easier to carve. It's hard for me to show you guys this though. Okay, so I'm going to take a small break. As you can see, I'm climbing. This trail actually includes ladders, which is very unusual. You see the civilization that they created here was not huge, but distinct in nature. Definitely tell from the black that humans were here for sure. forward I think I'm gonna be able to capture enough clips that I can splice together for you that gives you a pretty good understanding and view of how these people lived here lighting right now not so good but when I come back down cactuses. I suspect it's going to be a lot better.
another one of those dwellings that people were having fires in. It would have looked really cool at night. Seeing the shadow of the fire. Just by touching the rock here, I can kind of tell that it would be easy to carve into. So we're gonna go back down this way and go back up around. That's a nice one. As you can see. In theory, I haven't done it, but this trail goes all the way to the campground. So it's kind of a shortcut. I cheated, drove to the visitor center, started there. Wasn't even aware of that trail other than I saw something on the map. But it's, it's cool looking.
little area. It's like full of trees and brushes. You can hear all the birds.
All right, so I'm still at Bandelier National Monument. I have made it to basically, I think it's what they consider their crown jewel. It's the longhouse. Uh, the distance is not really much of an issue, but one must take into consideration the climbing. And so I climbed, let's see, one, two, three ladders that are like pretty tall straight up you'll see in the videos that uh, kind of what they look like but i've gone up here it's a great view i could see why the ancestral pueblo would come up here i don't think they lived here it kind of looks like a communal area maybe there was some religious significance i'm not sure but if you get out here to bandelier national monument if you have the physical capability to do so, I recommend that you take the climb. So I'm here at the Visitor Center, Bandelier National Monument, and they, of course they have the normal things, um, gift shop, which I got my hat. Also, they have you know, the ranger station, but uh, I think most importantly, something that they actually have is food. Uh, you don't see that at every national park or at every national monument. So I thought I'd try something a little unusual. So this is called an, an elk burger. And uh, I'll take a bite and see how it is. And, you know, they have other things on the menu. A lot of the basic stuff for kids and things. But, uh, um, I mean, I've been hiking for hours today. I fed all the highlights here at Bandelier. So it would be good to have a, a good burger. It's actually pretty good. It's it's an elk burger with green chili, so that's a little different. Um, it's a little, just a little spicy. It's not not actually very spicy. I thought it was gonna be more spicy. Um, man, it's not dry either. It's pretty juicy. So, I guess I give it a thumbs up. So, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of Bandelier uh, National Monument. And I'd ask that you, you know, follow us on whatever channel that you're following us on, whether it's Facebook or subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, give us a like, give us a comment. And until next time, uh, Explore Traveler out.